And we're live on the Cody Askins YouTube channel. Boom. Have you ever been live on the channel before? Never been live on the channel whatsoever. But welcome, everybody. Uh, this is an interview that I think has uh, been in the making for a while. Um, I've never got to personally interview Cody on live. I've never got to ask him the questions that you guys probably want to know about. Um, and like, so, like, what, like the elephant in the room. What is all this money freaking, dude? What do you got this stuff hanging out in it? Put it in the bank. So, go buy some we're real excited. estate. We're coming to you. We're going to get down to the nitty gritty of Cody Askins. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get started. You ready? I'm ready, bro. You ready? You, you guys ready for this? Okay, come on now, okay? You've been with me two years. Two years. Uh, uh, hang on. This is your interview. I'm not, I just about took over, okay? My bad. That's, my, that's, that's like what I do, okay? You're in charge. Go for it. Okay. Andy's our COO, by the way, for those that don't know that, for 8% CA. Um, he's with us two years, does an unbelievable job. And he's going to, and, and he's been, I've been wanting him to interview me for a while because he's, he's been here. He's seen some behind the scenes. He knows a lot too much, man. Everything. Dude, he knows everything. everything. That's, a, that's a problem. Okay. What do you got? I think one of the biggest questions that I had that I think everybody would enjoy knowing is why do you do what you do? And when I say that, I mean, why do you spend so much of your time why do you give so much to these people you have no idea who they are and why do you give so much of your personal income in order to help these people in order to help these insurance agents <laughs> and they don't even know why what, what you mean by asking that question but but yes uh we've early on we lost tons of money you know uh, on purpose too uh yeah you don't really want to but dude you, you got to get attention help people and deep down the reason i'm doing this right and we may mess around and have fun you know but deep down they know i'm, I'm here to, we're here to help them um we, we do a lot of what we do simply because when i was 20 i was doing very well i made 117,361 dollars and 13 cents right that's why this is here my first eight months i had a manager call me and he said hey will, will you come there's two agents they're in northern missouri they're four hours away from you they don't know you they're, they've heard of you because you're crushing it, but they're struggling and they don't know what to do. Like they're struggling to make sales and make money and they need your help. Will you come up here and help them for a day? I'm like, well, I mean, I'll door knock with them. You know, that's all I was, I did a ton of door knocking and, and we did. And I drove up, door knocked. We made, I think five sales in, in the day. And I left all the business with them, five apps. I didn't sign them. I left all the apps, the commissions, everything with them. We were high five. We were having a ton of fun. And I was driving back home. And I was in tears thinking about how much fun I had that day. It made me no money. Actually, it cost me money. It cost me gas money. Probably cost me a couple hundred bucks. And in, in time, when, I'm, when you're making, in the time I was probably making, um, let's just call it, Four grand a week. I don't know. Uh, at that time, that means that that day cost me eight hundred bucks, plus an additional two hundred dollars in gas. That, the day cost me a grand, but I did it because, and I was I was I was in tears thinking about the whole situation because uh, it was I knew I had found what I wanted to do the rest of my life. Like I'm driving back thinking, man, if I ever get an opportunity to go out and help an agent like that again, I'm doing it because I felt felt better about them making money than when I made money. Because me going out and making insurance sales at, at that point felt very easy to me. <laughs> Most people think it's like the hardest thing in the world. But I was a natural. It was flowing out of me. It was a blast. It was so easy. But I enjoyed helping others make money and make sales way more than I enjoyed myself. So fast forward a decade later, we're doing this and showing off some money and stuff and, and messing around. You know, the people that know me deep down know that I'm not, you know, an, an arrogant jerk. They know that I am showing this to them because they, can, if I can have this, they can too. And so that's why we do what we do. Put up a video five years ago, not knowing where it would lead, and look where it's blossomed to now. Um, the point is, you, you got to figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life. You know, and I think you started to figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life too, mm -hmm. which is pretty freaking cool. Mm -hmm. What a, and, and when we and when we talk about guys that Cody and Lauren spend so much money to give back to give you guys uh, the help that you need, you know, I'm the boring one in the company. I'm the one that's always saying no. We're not doing this. No, we're not spending this. But of course, Cody's like, well, yes, we are. And you can go and sit in the corner and and, and just deal with it. 
So that's cool, man. That that's awesome, and and I think a lot of people need to understand why you do it, and, and kind of the backstory of yeah, hey, you have put a lot of your own personal time, your own personal money into it, yep. and that's that's super important to know. And just for the record, this is all going right back in the bank. I'm hoping I can, you know. Yes, go, it is. I'm gonna go buy some real estate with it or something. I hope, you know, like I'm not just. Um, or we'll throw it at the conference and we'll drop all of this from 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 the from the ceiling at eight percent. Maybe that's what we should do. And he's like, "No, we nope, should not do no, that." No, we will not. <laughs> Vote. Let us know below in comments. Should we do that? Should I take all this and just drop it into your lap at the conference? Okay, like, cause, and, and you guys are watching this. You're like, "I don't even know what that is." We threw eight percent nation. We had um, Justin Forsett, Inky Johnson. We had some surprise speakers, and we actually dropped tens of thousands of dollars from the ceiling. Some people picked up more cash than they paid for their ticket, which is freaking awesome. That's what it's all about. It is. My next question is, was there a moment within the last 10 years that you knew you made it, that you knew you hit the definition of being successful? Um, well, I always told myself, you need to be a millionaire before you're successful. That's just what people think, right? You know, oh, you're a millionaire, you're successful. Um, there's, it's, there's more to life than money though too. But for me, my goal was to be like this. My goal was to make hundred grand my first year. I want to be a millionaire before I was 30. I'm, a, I'm, I'm 30. We've got, you know, we'll, we'll do 10 million bucks this year from all the companies. We've got a hundred staff between my dad's company and our companies and, and, and Land and I's company and the two buildings and all that. Um, the moment, I don't know. The thing is, the thing is, I don't know that I feel like Deep down, I almost still feel like I'm not successful yet. I think that's what like drives me and is so insane that people, the people, maybe you, maybe if you're like person, your personality is like me, you can comprehend that. But I still feel very unsuccessful because the people I'm following and I'm hanging out with and I'm watching are freaking light years ahead of me. You know, like I'm telling, I'm talking, I'm, I'm telling my wife all the time, like, man, I, I, I want to get on, I want, I got to get on Bert's level, I got to get on Cardone's level, I want to be Brian Tracy. You know, and and you think about that kind of stuff. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing so hard because I want to look back in a few decades from now and I want when people think of the word insurance, sales, maybe at one point real estate, money, whatever, success, I want them to think of us and what we're doing and everything we got going on and we got an amazing team that's helping us along that journey. I personally don't feel like I'm actually successful yet. That's the funny part of it because when I go home, I'm like, crap, I still, still can't buy a plane. That's a problem. Now, technically, we could get a down payment on an okay plane with what we got right here. <laughs> yes, we could. Right? We could, we could. So uh, that's a good point because I feel like when you ask an insurance agent or anybody, hey, what do you want to make this year? They just say, I want to make six figures. Yeah. I want to make $100,000. More, more than I made last year. Exactly. What kind of freaking answer is that? When you made $117,000, what was your next step? What was that feeling for you when you looked at, you know, your tax form and like, wow, I did it. Yeah. What was the next feeling? And I still got the 1099 to prove it too. Okay. For those who are like, ah, oh, you didn't do that crap. You know? Okay. Um, for me, it was okay. I started thinking if I can do a hundred, because you gotta think guys, I'm, I'm 20, I'm in college, I'm playing basketball. A hundred K seemed, I mean, <laughs> When I'm being paid like six fifty an hour to work at a grocery store, to then go earn a hundred thousand dollars just a few years later, it did not seem possible. Okay, like if I didn't have people around me that believed me more than I believed myself, I would have never got there. Um, and so, my next step was okay. How do I? If I can get to a hundred, I can get to two. If I can get to two, I can get to three. If I can get to three, I can get to four. I can get to five, and I can get to a million bucks a year. You know, and now I'm like, dude, if I can get to one hundred and then I can get to a million, which we've done, if I can get to 10 million, right, which we're doing, then I can get to a hundred million. And then if I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm starting to actually operate and think, man, if I can get to a hundred million, I'm watching billions right now uh, on, on Amazon, uh, Prime. Amazon Prime. So freaking good, by the way. I love that kind of stuff, man. I love it. And I'm like, how do I become Bobby Axelrod? How do I earn a billion dollars? Now, I'm, 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 I don't know, like, you know, again, I'm early in the show, so I don't know if he breaks the law or what, I have no freaking clue. All I know is, I'm always gonna do it with an ethical reason. You know that, my, the team knows that, my parents would freaking disown me, okay? Because 
I want to help people the right way. But for me, it was like, oh, it's always what's next. It's always like, how do we level up? I've been thinking about lately, how do we get 8% to a couple thousand to 10,000? Like if we had to just go rent an arena for 10,000 people today for 2022, what steps would we take to pull off getting 10,000 there? Uh, we'd have to push harder than we'd ever push. We have to spend millions of dollars. We'd have to go flipping ham. But could we pull it off? Like that's the kind of mm-hmm. stuff that I lay, lay at night and think about. Mm-hmm. With, with regards to that mindset, let's, let's kind of focus, let's kind of go in that direction really fast. Do you feel like you could go into any industry, anything, and be successful? No freaking question about it. Because once you've won, um, you know the steps. That's why people, I'm, I'm like, guys, you got to be coming to our events and retreats and masterminds and conferences and all the stuff we're doing. Because I'm telling you, once you do it once, I could do it all over again. And guess what? I could do, I could build a $10 million brand, a $50 million brand across the country handling flipping termites. I just could because of the amount of confidence I have in myself and belief in myself. And you guys are hearing this a lot. Like it comes back to your personal confidence and belief that you can do it. But part of me, um, we're going to do some stuff in the real estate game at some point here Mm -hmm. uh, before long. Why? Because I just want to, you know, like insurance. Everybody doesn't know us in insurance yet. And we're going to still make sure that that's still the mission. We'll still get there. We want to help every insurance agent in the world. But I get bored very easy. Hence, we're just hanging out with 117 grand just for the fun of it for the day. Um, but I, man, dude, you, you, I, like you guys should be sitting here. You should be sitting there. Like you should be hanging out with us. And, and, and I hope that one day you watching right now are holding this in your hand, looking at this, sitting there interviewing me just like Andy is today. That's what I really hope. So why do people fail? Why do most people fail? Why do people not get over that hump? Why do they give up? What's the biggest reason why they fail? Yeah, mindset. They, 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 there's doubt. I'm telling you, where there's doubt, there will be failure. Okay? Uh, I, I still have personal doubt every now and then. But then I check myself and remind myself, dude, you can do anything. You are unstoppable. Like I'm beating my chest literally in the shower saying, you, 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 I, I never get tired, I never quit. You're a machine, you're unstoppable, I never get tired, I never quit. I never get tired, I never quit. I never get tired, I never quit. Because how you talk to yourself matters. And that mindset piece, once you unlock the mindset piece and you've proved yourself you can do this crazy flipping stuff. Like the conference in 2018, it seemed like, I know this is not gonna sound insane to people listening and you and the team that's in here watching and listening, but, but I'm telling you, summer of 2018, I was scared to death. It was the biggest thing we had ever done. And we hadn't done it yet. And there were people saying, well, what if it doesn't happen? Do I get my money back? Like they're even putting doubt in my mind. And I'm like, dude, I need to stop hanging out with these people that are putting doubt in my mind. And And for myself, I've never seen you scared. (laughs) I won't ever say it. (laughs) Yeah, I won't ever say it. Um, There's things that I still have doubt about and that we all have internal demons and battles and stuff that we got to deal with. Um, A lot of you don't think that you deserve a hundred grand a year. Everyone deserves a hundred thousand dollars a year. I hope we get so successful. Every single person on our team earns a hundred grand a year one day. Mm -hmm. I do. I I, I love that. And the more successful we we, we are, the more we try to share it with the rest of the team, you know, Um, because I know that it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about you doing something special to to propel your own universe and to help a lot of other people along the way. That's what it's about. Okay. If you were still selling insurance, okay, yeah. what would you have yeah. made in 2020? Oh. Like personally or a company? Because like if I, if I want to just freaking turn on a recruiting faucet and have a call center and sell everything else. Let's you know. go. Let's go company. Because you would have put um, someone in place to build a team for you. For you. So, yeah, and I haven't sold in like three, four, five, three, four years. Um, ooh. Probably 12 million bucks. Dang. 
And the thing is, I could turn it on right now and build a company that's, that's like an IMO, recruiting people and all this other stuff and helping agents and stuff and do 12 million bucks, probably within 36 months. That's not the target for me though, that's not mm -hmm. the goal. Um, now if I had to go personally sell insurance on my own, I could go out now with what I know and make a million dollars in one year, 10 times this, in one year selling on my own personally. No question about it, by the way. I've got the skill, I got the money to invest in making sure everyone knows who I am. I could put a couple people around me and teams in place to help to help prop me up so that all I'm doing is closing. Like, uh, there's no question about it. I could actually probably get to where I'm doing um, 100 grand a week personally producing. I, I believe it. A lot different mindset than a lot of people had in 2020. Yeah. With everything that happened, oh, this Dude, happened. Dude, what's funny is, you asked that question, I didn't even think of COVID until you just said it. The whole time I'm answering the question, it never entered my mind. Because uh, to me, it doesn't exist. And you say, well, that's not fair. Well, it's, it's, it, it, I'm, I'm trying to control my own world and I'm trying to be positive and I'm not trying to worry about what everything else is going on in the world. I'm trying to worry about these few feet around me, these six feet, one inches, you know, 176 pounds maybe, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to control me and everything around me instead of worry about, about what everybody else is doing and thinking. And so for me, um, my brain went positive when you said 2020. <laughs> It didn't even go negative. It was a great year for us. Oh my gosh. One of our best years. And it probably could have been better. <laughs> could have been way better. Well, dude, it was, it was ridiculous. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you, you, you started two years ago, I think April... 2019. 19. Um, and it's two year, almost two years later. Almost. And what we did in 2019 compared to what we did in 2020 is freaking ridiculous. What we're going to do in 2021 compared to 2020, mm -hmm. ridiculous. What we're going to do in 2031 compared to 2021, flipping insane. But you got to be, uh, that's, uh, that goes back to the question. You've got some really good questions, by the way. But the question you asked earlier about when did you realize you're successful? It's, it's, it's more about like the journey and having fun and doing stupid crap like this and being an internal promoter uh, than it is stopping and thinking, when did I get so successful? You know, mm -hmm. the moment I start acting like that and thinking like that, everybody just needs to walk out and leave because, because, um, I'm, I say it all the time, I've never, I haven't arrived and hope I never do because we've got something special. Like we are gonna be known by everyone in the industry. Dude, we may, but we may be known by every salesperson on planet Earth one day. That's the freaking trajectory mm -hmm. we're on as long as we don't screw it up, which means we're accepting responsibility. It's meant to be, it's up to me. Okay. This year, 2021 so far, I feel like a lot of things have come in a complete circle. Yeah. You got to interview Brian Tracy. Okay. Yeah. Listen to him when you were on the road with the cassette tape. Dude, look at broke. goosebumps. The 117K sitting right beside us. Yeah. What's missing? What is missing in Cody's life right <laughs> now that I, I need these things? I need this to for everything to come complete circle. Uh, a, 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 a vision jet, a serious vision jet. Um, a beach house, um, a forty, a four-story commercial office building in Springfield, Missouri. First floor is Sig, second floor is Sam, third floor is CA, and the top is a, uh, and the fourth floor is a uh, training facility, and then the on top there's like a rooftop balcony. Like that's where this thing is headed. How cool would that be, man? Corner um, office. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The whole thing is glass. I mean, it, it, it's like uh, also a couple, you know, several hundred staff, ten thousand at, at a conference. Um, the thing, a thousand, a thousand of uh, units uh, uh, of real estate, thousand apartments. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I deep down want that I'm not, I, I, or, or that I'm we're going to get in the future that I'm not even writing down today. It's hard to fathom. It's, it may be hard for you guys to fathom, like listening to some of the stuff I'm saying, but I'm telling you, um, we never think big enough. In our own, we're in our own little bubble. We're surrounded by our family and our friends and, and negative Nancys on Facebook and everything else. And we have a tendency to, to limit the way we think because of the way we were raised, the people in our life, the people around us, what we've accomplished previously, 
we'll say, well, I just, I made, you know, $10,000 last year, so I'm going to make, if I can just get to 20000 this year, right, whatever. We don't know what we don't know, and we don't know where we can go because we've got this governor, um, like they have on cars, that we got this own governor on our, on our own mind, and we don't know where this whole thing can take us. Uh, and and that's why most people just think too small, and that's the reason. We, I feel like me and you go back and forth all, every day at nighttime after we leave the office of yeah we could have done this or totally. we're not thinking big enough or you came up with an idea and we've really got to discuss it and, yeah. and dissect it of hey can we make this work? I actually came up with a way for me to buy a plane sooner uh, last night. Um, it would have just involved a few other people, some investors and that kind of thing, but I haven't told anybody yet. Okay, well, you're, you're, you're about to go somewhere, but I had to throw that in. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, where are we going to be in 10 years? Everything that we're doing, everything that we're building, everything that you're creating, where is it going to be in 10 years? It will probably have transcended insurance, which I've never said on video before. I'm starting to think bigger than ever lately. Um, I'm traveling around the world. I'm speaking in Dubai. Whatever, right? Um, which, I mean, that sounds stupid, but we just spoke to 4,000 agents in the Philippines, mm -hmm. and they wanted us to go there. Pretty freaking cool. Um, we are, how good are these questions, by the way? He's asked some really good questions, okay? I don't, be, I don't know how long he's been pr preparing for this, but it's showing today. Um, and also, what other questions would you guys want to, to hear in the future, future interviews? Post Maybe that. for a part two. Maybe for a part two, post that in comments, okay? Um, it's, it's uh, we will look back what I can confidently say is we will look back and we will not recognize this place. Mm -hmm. I told Landon when we first partnered, I said, dude, we will, we will um, look back in a year and we won't recognize this place. And every year, we don't recognize this place. That's the point. Like, that's what you guys want to do in your life. You want to get to where? Dude, you don't recognize your life every 12 months. In 2020, you know, looking back where we're at right now, everything's changed team has changed. Growth has been just yes. crazy. And, and honestly, I'll use the word unstoppable. Like yeah. nothing has stopped us. No one has stopped no. us. We've just continued to grow and continue to push the needle for all things in the industry. That's right. So That's right. Um, and we, ain't, we ain't stopping anytime soon. No, we're not. No, we're not. Ideal life. You know, you talk about it a lot with me and Lauren. Yeah. Hey, this is my ideal life. This is what I want. Let, let's kind of let them know what Cody's ideal life looks like. Um, I try. I, I only travel and speak. Um, people pay fifty grand to, to hang out with us for a day. Um, I have a. We have a private island somewhere that we do retreats at. Um, and this whole thing does a hundred million dollars plus a year, whether I show up or not. Now I'm gonna just keep showing up because that's just the way, <laughs> the way I think and I'm not gonna stop. Um, and we've got tons of team members around us that are, that are winning. Like mm -hmm. when someone goes and buys a, a vehicle and shows it off like Nick did recently and Derek did previously and Rodney and all these other people, um, it's really cool, you know? It's really, really, you, you did that like it's just really cool uh, to see that kind of stuff that's what that's what li really uh, feeds Lauren mm -hmm. um, is when when our cells when our staff is winning just in general our entire staff um, and that's a good point because when I do interviews and when I interview people and they come into this place for the first time whether it's that building over there or this building yep. you know one of the best things that I get to explain to people is our culture and yeah. you know we're so big on culture, but really what makes our culture tick is the ownership. When the ownership wants every team member to win, yeah. when the ownership genuinely has every team member's back, that's the place you wanna be. And that's why we've been able to grow so quickly, but also focusing on only bringing on the people that we want. That's we right. Very selective. So. Super selective. We, we had a guy start over, over in the marketing building t today. He has a chance of being a killer, but he walked up and shook my hand and said, um, Thank you for the opportunity. You, you, we, you, I love the, the, the culture. You guys have something special here. I'm like, how cool is that? You know, mm -hmm. Five years ago, I'm just doing all this on my own. That's not as fun, man. That's not as fun. Um, it's not cool to be alone and doing it on your own. It's also selfish. Like if you guys want to do something huge, 
massive, big, you want to transcend the industry, you want to help a ton of people, um, for you to only want to do it alone and stay small is selfish because there's other people that want to take the ride with you mm -hmm. and that you can also help a lot of other people along the way. What, uh, what gives you goosebumps? What gets <laughs> you so jacked up when it all involves the business, the team, the, the people you help, what gives you goosebumps? What is that one thing? Um, walking off stage from an event. I spoke to a team of health insurance agents in Phoenix a couple weeks ago. And I walked, it was like 60, 70 people, whatever. I got them so jacked up. They were screaming and yelling. The company was going nuts. Everybody was putting targets in their phone on what they're going to accomplish in the next 30 days. And I'm just screaming and yelling at the top of my lungs. I'm, I got more into that speech than I've ever gotten to any speech in my life. Okay. A little crazy. And you weren't even there. So you're like, dude, I, I, and, and we got some, I need, we need to get some video from that guy, by the way. And I, I'm literally walking off thinking, man, I don't think there's anything I enjoy doing more than what I just did. And I'm getting goosebumps walking back to the green room to get my backpack, to go shake some hands, take some pictures, whatever. Um, we'll have a book. Uh, soon, which will be cool, um, and I'm walking off that thinking, when did all of this become uh, a reality for me? Because five years ago, that seemed like it was 20 years away. Because mm -hmm. you wanted to be a public speaker. Yes, yes. I watched my grandfather pastor for 40, 50 years. Well, he did it for 40 years. I'm 30, so I didn't watch him for 40, 50 years. Um, and I used to think to myself, I want to get up and speak to people like he does. I'd watch Brian Tracy and Zig Ziglar and all these other people and be like, man, and Jim Rohn and, and Tony Robbins, all, you know, and I'd be like, man, I, I want to, uh, I decided I want to be a public speaker when I was 10. 20 years ago, I made a decision. I will be a public speaker one day. You guys are make. you got to make decisions ahead of time. When you think about something and the life you want, you got to tell yourself, dude, this is going to happen, man. This is mm -hmm. going to happen because I'm telling you, it can, and it will. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, let's finish this out. Okay. okay. What is your biggest goal? Okay, and when people maybe miss the mark of, of achieving their goals, what should they do next? Should they aim higher? Should they throw the goal away? Yeah. Where are you at with that? Um, our goal is to have a thousand at eight percent this year to fill the Statler, to overfill the Statler, mm -hmm. so that we can finally leave. Okay, they only have 988 chairs. We'll find room for 12 more, trust me. Okay, I want a thousand there. Because I want to leave thinking, dude, we conquered this facility. 2019, we did not conquer it. 2020, we had to go small, but we still did an event. Only one to do it, persist and show up or not, right? But 2021, I want to conquer the facility so that when we leave, I don't look back and say, well, you could have done more. You could have done better because that's that's just not fun to do, and then and then p people, your goals should be so big that you don't always hit them. By the way, that's the problem. With people they mm -hmm. set like realistic goals. It's like, dude, I, I want to set goals so big that is even if I like don't make it, which I never think I'm not going to. By the way, there's a secret there, but at some point, I'm going to look back and say, well, I did better because I put the target higher. That's what people need to do. Boom. Boom. There it is, guys. Thanks, bro. The real interview with Cody Askins. Uh, we hope it helped. We hope you learned some things that you didn't know about Cody before. Um, if you have other questions, drop them in the comments below, please. And then hopefully we'll see you for part two soon. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. It, you, are, you have like a special energy about you that you... Like I'm telling you guys, you get to know this cat. I'm telling you, like he 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 just he, from a, like a relationship standpoint, personality standpoint, you're one of the easiest person 